Welcome to In Zone number 58. And I've got what we would call our modern day Mrs. Marine City with me. <laughs> Georgia Geyer Phelan, welcome. Thank you very much, Craig. <laughs> I used all my, uh, all my connections to get this uh, top secret interview in, <laughs> in the books here, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I know the answer to most of these questions. You were born and raised in Marine City, but tell us where you were born and raised in Marine City. I was born, our family lived uh, in a large house almost to the east end of Chartier, kind of kitty corner from the little bar. Yeah. And uh, my dad bought that house from his dad. Okay. My sister bought it from our dad. Her son bought it from her. And then finally he sold it out of the family. Uh, so I was raised kitty corner from the little bar, yeah. but that was a little too up upscale for us when I was an adult before I ever ate across oh, the street at the little right, bar. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yep. Well, and you were really sort of close to everything there, you know, whether it was oh. getting to uh, Bell River to go on a little boat ride as a kid. We used to ice skate on Bell River <laughs> right. all the time, and uh, you had to stay away from the edges because there were still yep. drains from people's homes yep. raining. And stay down the middle, we'd go ice skating. I had a girlfriend uh, who lived almost directly across Bell River on the point. And my mom was always like, you do not swim in Bell River right. because of said uh, drains yeah. and stuff. But to get there, we'd have to walk all the way to the bridge and then all the way back up. So in the summertime, we would swim across, run through her yard and jump in the big river. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just to get cleaned off. Which is what we would call it, the big river. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. So, so you were born in an area in a, in a day and age when you could basically come and go as you pleased all summer long. Oh, we, w when we were little, little kids, you used to say, just like probably now, you stayed on the block. You yeah. know, your mom had to be able to yell at the back door and yeah. hear you. And that, but my sister and I, when we became old enough, and could, so we would walk to the beach every day in the summer. There's just the two of us. We'd walk yeah. up to the beach. We'd swim for a few hours and come home and eat double jack or peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because we were starving. And when we got older, then we learned and knew how to swim well. We swam at the Edison, which is now yeah. Lighthouse Park and uh, called the Edison because the Guy Center building was the Edison, the Edison building. Yes. Yes. We used to go get free light bulbs. Free light bulbs, yeah, they'd send us for free light bulbs too all the time. Yeah. So yeah, it was definitely a different era. Yeah. And, I, and I wouldn't sit here and say it's better or worse or whatever because it's just different. Right. You know, things, things evolved. I was not raised the same way as my parents. My dad, my parents were born in 1917. Right. So um, we were born to them when they were way older, way older. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. But, you know, he'd tell stories about, uh, it, like, uh, hitching on the back of the ice trucks and getting on the, you know, icy roads and getting pulled down the road in the back of the ice truck. And someone like, yeah, no. That's a guy thing as a teenager, though. I guess so. <laughs> but even when I was growing up, nobody grabbed a hold of the back you know, of a, of a, car, a vehicle right. going by and slid through. Well, probably somebody did, right. but not, not generally. Right. You know, so things evolved. So things evolved. It was a great way to grow up and a great place to grow up. And that was part of the reason, um, you know, that I got involved in a lot of things in Marine City because I thought it can be better than this. Yeah, yeah. Than, than had, because downtowns were starting to fail. Well, and if you, you look at from, from those days even to this day, it's still a cool place to be it and is. see and do. It is, but there was a gap in there when yeah. Things moved away from from towns and yep. cities into malls. And Kmart's. And Kmart and, yeah. and, and, and malls yeah. and that kind of thing. And so, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I remember Kmart going in out at 23 yep. and Gratiot. And then it grew around there. And, and then the malls were built and everything. And it did. It did pull business away. Sure. And then uh, there was this movement. When I started getting involved with this, I could see this movement towards towns again. They're build it, they built places like Partridge Creek and you look right. at them like, it's they're, like a downtown. They're, du they're duplicating a downtown right. only with a parking lot yeah. like a mall. Right. We know, have like, this. Mm. Yeah, we have this. So, you know, in 2006 when I did the town hall meeting, uh, that was what we did a SWOT analysis and that was one of the things that we, that came up, you know, is about um, we have opportunity here. So what are our opportunities? And SWOT an analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, been around forever, but nobody ever really had done that. And that was 2006, and from 20 years before that, things had changed so much. The downtown was quite vacant, you know? Well, and, and yeah, it, I always use the term, you could throw a bowling ball down, oh, down I always you know, say shoot a cannon. Water Street, shoot not a cannon. And you never had to worry about a place to park. Right. That was not an issue at all. And uh, we had to worry about is if there was anywhere to go. You know, there were a couple of businesses right. that were there that were successful, but uh, it was not very many. And uh, the, the 
attitude amongst a lot of people went south too during that yeah, time. Yeah. And it was so negative. It was a cycle. It, yes, yeah. it, right. It was part of a cycle. Like communities have cycles, like businesses have cycles and that. And so, uh, you know, to me it was like we're, we're, we are ignoring what we do have here. Yeah. And we are not working well with what we do have here. So that was part of that town hall in 2006. So let's talk about it. Let's see. I, I <laughs> told my husband, Mike, that I was going to have this town hall. He goes, you and who? And I was so like, <laughs> not just me right now. Right. But the idea is that we'll get there. <laughs> we find some people that want to do this. And that worked very well. It led to an organization called Citizens Action Group with probably 15, 18 people. And we did a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. We developed partnerships with the Community Foundation, with MSU Extension, um, with, with the state, with some programs and things. Uh, we got some new... Several of the members of that organization ran for city commission and got seats there. Sure. They made some different decisions that helped. One of the first things, and my nephew Patrick Phelan was, I know worked on this, was signage. They wanted to change to some of the old fashioned signs like over the sidewalk, you right, know, right. The hang the shingle out or whatever. And it was absolutely no, no, no. Yeah, well, right. It's like, why, why not? not? It did for a hundred no, years. Because <laughs> we don't do it that way. And it was like, oh my gosh. So right. we got some new people in, Patrick, I think may have been planning commission at the time and you know it was like why can't we and they changed that sure. i mean it's a small thing but it's all those kinds of things Little that things make that a difference yeah. so that group was very very successful and they I, we actually disbanded at a certain point in time because everything picked up speed and things started going well and then it was like we don't need to be duplicating what other organizations sure. that we were doing a lot of things and we were doing it because no one was doing it there right. might have been organizations or the city or whatever it could have been doing it weren't and once they started doing these things let them have it we <laughs> yep let the organization go i said we don't want to be competing so i said go join that group or sit on that sure. board and keep this work going and that's pretty much how that went right. but we were together for a number of years yeah and, and you never you never think about it like this but you think about like you mentioned how things change mm -hmm. and it's not a good it's not a bad but you look at the hub of say a town like a marine city right. Uh, tended to be uh, whether it's a Becker's or a Dancer's <laughs> or some right. of these businesses that no longer exist because of technology, because yeah. of malls, because yep. you know things like that. Yes. But if you go to, to downtown St. Clair, downtown Marine City today on a weeknight or a weekend, it's primarily centered around restaurant, lounge. You know, it just My, happens to be that way. Well, it's because. <laughs> everybody eats right Not everybody is a shopper yeah. but everybody eats and what i l learned from my community planning uh background that i have because i was master citizen planner with msu extension from the inception of that i just dropped it last year after i don't know 10 12 years or something but i learned you know some of these things it's like what if you have a couple of good restaurants right. That, that's already drawing some people. That's a catalyst, right? Yeah, that's a catalyst. And see, at the time, we didn't have Sweet Tooth or Fish Company. Yep. And that, so it's like, okay, so we've got a couple things. Anita's was there. Yeah. You know, Gars and then there. Gars was there on the other side of town. Little Bar was there. And we've got that. So one of the things, it's like, what, what do we have that's a strength? And what that town hall meeting came up with is one of our strengths is like, we have t 10 antique stores right, right in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. And it was something that people that live there didn't think about. And they didn't realize people were already coming to Marine City for that. Sure. If they knew about it, they came. Because for somebody who's an antiquer, they'll drive two hours to go to a town with right. eight or ten stores right, right here, they right spend there. spend all afternoon. Spend right. the whole day there, and then they'll eat. Yeah. And if there are other stores, they'll do that. So we decided um, probably the best thing that we could do is start marketing. Because if people came, they enjoyed it. Sure. And, uh, and the other thing we used was our... Uh, historical architecture that was still intact. Yeah. You yeah. know, not no all communities renewal. had that. Right. Yep, no, no urban renewal in the early 70s like other communities did, which we don't have one of those beautiful parks on the river with you right. can walk the whole thing. Yeah. But we have parks along right. the river. You can walk it. You walk in and out and, and that. And so, but we do have those beautiful buildings that they can't duplicate. Right, right. <laughs> and they don't duplicate. And uh, so that, again, that was another strength, you know, to work on. So we worked on marketing, and you can't believe how much, how much exposure we got for almost no money. <laughs> because right, right. we didn't have a lot of money. But we learned, and that we, we dug up whatever we could to do. Probably one of the biggest things we ever did, which is a couple of years in. Um, did you ever see Under the Radar, Michigan? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
we did yeah. that. It took two yeah. years to get them to get here. Them here. Tom. To get them, yep, yeah. and it took two years, and we actually just annoyed them to death, I think. And they right, finally right. Came. Sooner or later, he's going to show They said, up. oh, let us know. Well, we had this group going, and we had a huge email list of supporters. And so it was like, my, my son Chris said, like, well, let's have everybody email them. Right, <laughs> they, right. They're asking for email. emails. Oh, and that is exactly what happened. Pe everybody emailed them. Well, they kind of nibbled a little bit, but they didn't go. So we let, right. we let it drop for a while. And about a year later, Chris goes, let's do it again. I go, right. like, okay. So we did it again. Right. I was like, well, they came. And they even mentioned it in, right. in our segment. Um, these people annoyed us to death with their emails. So we thought, well, Check this it out. many people right. think it's a good idea. So they came. But... It's really interesting, the businesses that we didn't even have yet at right. the time they came. But the week following, so that I think it um, appeared like, like Friday, Saturday, Saturday, whatever, you know, that weekend it first appeared. The following week, all these people showed up, and everybody downtown was like, where, where did these people from? come from? Right. Like, what, all of a sudden, where these people came from, they came from that show. Because right. there are people that watch the show, well, and when they see I mean, something new. When you think about it, like that example, Mm -hmm. It doesn't take 5,000. No. If 30 or 40 people came yes. and tell a couple people, you yes. know, because if you draw a circle from Marine City and go to Sterling Heights to Warren, you know, that Washington was, Township, Romeo. That was another strength yeah. that we identified was our proximity to most of the Detroit yeah. metro area. Yeah. And it's like we can, although one of the downsides is it's only 180 degrees because right. we have our river. Right. But it was like, but it's not like they can't get across. The ferry was fully functioning right. at the time. And uh, so we did some of our marketing and some of the money that we actually spent was on the Canadian side. Sure. Uh, we didn't have access to the freebie stuff there right. that we did over here. And um, that worked too, you know. So well, you know, you look at, I look at it from the standpoint, if I go to Riviera or I go to a fish company mm -hmm. and I look around, Mm -hmm. And I go, I don't know anybody here. And that's not a bad oh. thing sometimes, right? No, I, I, was, I was, it makes me think of, I went to the Sweet Tooth once, and this wasn't too long after um, everything really got going. And they had moved from the small space across the street, street to yeah. the there's place now. And it was full of people. And I'm standing there waiting my turn. And I was kind of doing that. And I was just thinking like, oh, this is so cool, right? And all this business, all right. these customers. And I turned and I looked and I caught the eye of a gentleman that I knew. And he went, oh, like, oh. There's somebody I know. He, he, did. he actually came over and he went, you're somebody I know. <laughs> he goes, look at all these people. I don't know anybody. And I said, right. well, I go, is that a good or a bad thing? He goes, well, I'd like to not have to wait. He goes, but it's exciting for the community and the business support. Well, sometimes there. I'll drive to go to Fish Company, Anita's, wherever. Uh -huh. And I'll be a little mad because I can't find a spot. <laughs> but I know that if I go around the block, I'm going to catch something, something on the backside yes. or catch another spot. It's not like if you go right. to the mall, if you go to you go to Somerset, you go to anywhere, yes. you're going to be you are not 400 park yards in away. Of, oh, that's what we always tell people when they complain about the parking. Right. One of the things we said in that meeting that was a threat, and they go like, well, what about parking? If it gets busy, what about parking? You go like, oh, my gosh. Two blocks. If we should ever get to that, I hope I live long enough to see right. that, you know? Right. And, of course, we got there. But there was there was that. It's like if you're successful, then it, there's going to be a little bit of inconvenience because yeah. it's an old downtown, and that's why people like it. That's part of the reason right. why people like it. So you park around the corner, around the block, whatever, right. and I, I can think about going to St. Armand Circle in Florida if you've oh. ever been there. And my sister and I parked probably a quarter of a right. mile from right. the downtown area where we wanted to go, but we did. We did. And we weren't expecting to park. I said, it's the locals that were used to pulling right. right up in front of the Ben Franklin store yes. and, and or, or the foster drugs or whatever and, and parking right there. Right. That they were like, ugh, you know, now I have to, like you right. said, you were used to. Yeah. Right? And I said, well, it's, there's a trade off there. And you know it's not it's not that big a trade off really. Um, oh, yeah. Could we use more parking? Sure, uh, you know. And I think we're always looking for that. I think that in the city they're always looking for that. Yeah. I always tell people, you know, there's a public parking lot at Market Street. I, like what? <laughs> I say the same thing. I know where it's at. Yeah. I don't tell everybody. I don't because you want it, right? Yeah. Well, and one of the things we did, I went to a workshop that a woman was there from Northville, and it's the same thing, older downtown, yep, yep. and they. They rejuvenated and got things going again, and parking became an issue. And she said, we went to, and then I ended up doing the same thing. We went to businesses that owned all the way through the block and had, a, right. had parking in the back and said, why don't you make that Open public that parking? Up. 
Right. And people can get to your business, but they can get the other businesses too, but they're gonna be going through your right. business to get to the other side. And that, so we really encouraged that. Uh, that. That was some of the things we got. MSU Extension was fabulous. We went to, uh, early on, they had a program that they started calling Creating Entrepreneurial Communities. Took me a year to be able to say that, right? But th it still exists, but in a different format a little bit now. And we got in right at the beginning. And there was uh, like a four-day workshop thing to go to, cost $3,000, and I was like, oh, hmm. okay. Yeah. We got Community Foundation, Glenn McBride. Yeah, there you and go. And they made sure we got there. And we took a team over and we came back with all these ideas. We came back with resources. We came back with a mentor, Julie Avers from uh, MSU Library was our mentor and she was wonderful. We could, I could always call her and say like, Julie, okay, um, this is the situation or whatever, and she could make um, some suggestions or reach out to her. Like, it was fabulous. We, t we had good timing on a lot of things. Sure. Uh, that program was perfect timing for us. The MEDC program to reutilize, a grant program to reutilize upstairs spaces, turn them into apartments yep. over these old, you had to meet the criteria, it had to be old downtown, had to be zero setbacks to the, you know, on the yep. sidewalks, all these kinds of things. We met at 110%. Well, and I know there's a good half dozen that I know of that were directly related to it. That two, they used two at the it. Riviera, and the I know. Riviera, yeah. um, Anita's has yep. three yep. above it. So there were a number of them that took advantage of that. And what was unusual, especially at that time, this was, um, these were grants that are available to private owners, which was for the public good, yeah. though. Because there was, and that was another thing, is like when the stores closed, it was a ghost town. Right. Everybody went home because nobody lived right. there. Right. And so it was helpful to, for the, uh, to make it, the, for the vitality of the community, to have people that live there. And also there's a safety factor. It's like when there are people around, right. less mischief happens. Yep. I always said when people like Lighthouse Park now, that was Edison Park, uh, the teenagers would take that over in oh, the yeah. summertime and people would avoid it because of all these right. rowdy teenagers, you know, and stuff. And it was like, well, you know, if we go and use it too, right. if they're up to no good or whatever, they will relocate. Right. And that's what happened. The more that adults use that park, the less that the, the rowdy teenagers, the rowdy teenagers yeah. did. Some stayed, the volleyball courts there, swimming and all. Those kids stayed, but the ones that caused the trouble moved on. Yeah. They didn't want that many eyes on them. So we kind of fixed that ourselves, you know, just from being present. Yep. So it's, it, it, it was very exciting. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, I hoped I'd live long enough to see parking being a problem. Yeah. It was amazing to yeah. me how quickly it, it took off. Yeah. And we felt that if people would, if we get enough feet in the street and they come check it out for whatever they saw on Under the Radar or, what, sure. or our, our marketing that we did, um, that they would come back again. We were pretty sure they would come back again. And some of those people might think it was a good place to do business. To live or do business. I right. did some business recruitment prior to that. And what they'd always say is like, oh, we came by. There just aren't enough people there. So then it becomes the chicken or the egg. It's right. like, well, which do you do first? And you pretty much have to work on both of them at the right. same time. Right. So, so you come from a big, large family. Pretty good. There's six of us over 22 years. Right. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, we are around a long time. Okay. So you've got you, your, your twin sister. Yes. And let's go through the whole Geiger family. So the, uh, <laughs> the eldest is my brother, Fred. Okay. And uh, he and his wife live out in Southfield. And then my sister, Janet. And she lives here in Marine City. My brother, Jim, who was in Saint, outside St. Clair for many years at mm -hmm. Christmas tree farm out there. He, he was another, not, didn't fa fall far from the tree. Okay. Uh, but he's in Boyne City now, retired and up in Boyne City. And then myself, Contraville Township, uh, Miriam, my twin sister, Miriam, who's in Marine City here, and my brother, Don, and he lives out in Peck. Okay, big family. Big family. Well, I, and I think most of those guyers went to school with the Zimmerman. Oh gosh, yes. <laughs> All the way through the years, yes. you know? Yes, yep, absolutely. <laughs> So Dean and Larry were a year ahead yep. of me. I know, I know they're the closest ones to me. Yeah. So uh, yeah, there are always a bunch of Zimmermans, a bunch of Geyers. Yeah. And then the, my husband's family, the Phelans, when yes. they closed the Catholic schools out in yeah. Anchorville and New Baltimore, uh, that whole gang, there's Kings. nine of them shifted over to, to Marine City to Holy Cross. Yeah. Um, so you, you went to Holy Cross, correct? Yes. 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 The, um, the, that big garden that my dad had that we sold produce out of, uh, paid for us to go to Holy Cross. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once a month, I'd have my envelope with with cash money in it, and I had to t 
take it to the office Deliver and turn it, it in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did, you, did you go to college after high school? Um, I did not. I got married right out of high school. Okay. Had three kids within four years, house, dog, the whole thing. So it was like, I, yeah, yeah. So I was, I think I was 28 or 29 when I finally went to school. Okay. And I went back to school. Um, I really intended to finish, but I did not. Okay. And kind of real life kind of way, and opportunities to do other things came up, and it was, can't do it all. And then I was singing too. Okay. So all the singing that I did, those were rehearsals every week and performances and things. So The barbershop. Uh, yeah, it was women's, uh, Sweet Adeline's barbershop. Right. Yeah. Not really my style or whatever, but it kept me singing, and there was a lot of training that went went with it. I started with a little course out of St. Clair and then moved down to the east side in a big course there and that was a very uh, competitive chorus. And so there were like 85 or 90 of us okay. I think and so it was a lot of vocal training in that. I always intended to take that somewhere else but then uh, you know like do so. Life away. Well and you can only do so right. much you know. So you better mention the kids or, or I'm gonna get. My kids <laughs> yeah wonderful kids. My <laughs> oldest son uh, Chris and his wife Katie uh, up in Port Yarn, Chris works at Lowe's, and Katie is the director of the uh, shelter director, of Blue Water Area Humane Society. Okay. And then Jonathan and his wife Cassandra and their two kids uh, live now in New Baltimore. He, when he moved back to Marine City from after being out right. in the world, uh, they lived here in Marine City, and then they went to the North End of Algonac, and now they're in New Baltimore. And I think they'll be there for a while. Yeah. And uh, Jonathan's personal financial. Yep. manager and uh, Chris Andrews with the Anchorage schools and she's and I should I can't think of what her title is right now but her degrees are in social work and that kind of thing and she's in an administrative position now but I think she's wearing several hats at Anchor Bay and then um, my youngest Matt and his wife Jillian live out in um, uh, Williamston which is outside of East Lansing mm -hmm. where they live for quite a while and Jillian's a registered nurse and Matt works now for the Alzheimer's Association he worked okay. for about 15 years for American Cancer Society, so now he's with Alzheimer's. And when he was considering that job, he called, you know, talk about it. And I said, well, if you want my two bets on this, <laughs> two cents worth on this, I said, cancer gets a lot of attention as sure. it should. Uh, Alzheimer's needs more. There are so many people being fed. The longer we live, the more well, people Well, and that's the thing, you know, if I mentioned that if you look a generation ago, yes. people didn't tend to get Alzheimer's because they only live to be 60, 65. Well, exactly, right? and as the life expectancy has gone Into up, the 80s. and it's not just Alzheimer's, right. it's like all kinds of things, right. because the older we get, the more vulnerable we're gonna get something, right. you know, something's right. gonna go on. And, but the Alzheimer's is so demanding sure. for a family. It's really, it's, it's a cruel disease, uh, and it's really, it's really tough on a family because um, they, they start out okay, but yeah. then there's, more and more uh, dependency and need and, de and just demand on, the, on their caregivers. And it frequently falls to one person. Right, right. And it's, it's just really hard. It takes a lot of resources uh, in that. So it's, it's tough. I, uh, I just got back in touch with, there's um, an Alzheimer's organization, Sinclair County, uh, uh, SEC. I'm trying to think of the acronym, yeah, yeah. but anyway, but yeah. it's all for Alzheimer's uh, support group, which is great because they, and I don't think enough people take advantage of this, they raise funds and uh, they provide respite. So they the provide money takers. for respite care so that caregivers can get out of the house, right. they can do it. If, they, if it's they need to go grocery shopping by themselves right, right. or they need to just go sit in a park well, with a cup of coffee for I a while. I also think that if every family in America really is, a, is associated with something with Alzheimer's. Right? Everybody. I, that, I, I can't think of anyone that I know that doesn't, that doesn't have somebody in their family right. or in their neighborhood or where, if not all of the above, right. uh, that, that's with Alzheimer's. And, and, of course, and then you don't even have to be old. There's early onset Alzheimer's, which sure. Mike's, uh, my husband Mike's aunt developed in her 60s, yep. which was she had a wonderful career. And, you know, she's, that's been uh, 10 or 12 years since she had to leave work. And, you know, it's tough. My dad had Alzheimer's. Mike's mom had Alzheimer's. Yep. My husband's family did a marvelous job taking care of their mom. They kept her home probably at least a year longer than mm -hmm. normal, but there are nine of them and they're all nearby. Right, right. And so everybody took their share, but it, even for that, it got to the point where all like, right. you know, everybody, we, we're, we still have jobs and families, we can't be here all the time. And, and she fell more and she just needed more physical care. Right. And so she, um, 
ended up out at um, Village of East Harbor okay, yeah. for like 13 months. But when she got there, they she got there, they said, oh, probably three months, something like that. And she went 13 months, so she yeah. did pretty good. But but again, the family, and it took it took all of them to be able to keep her home like that. Sure. And I've known people that, I have a friend who was an only child and took care of her mother, and she had, and people should never do this, promised her. She'd never put right. her anywhere. Well, her mom got to the point where she didn't even know who Patty was. Right. And here's Patty, I made a promise, I've got to do it. And we thought, just like we thought with my mom, that we were going to lose the caregiver sure. before the one <laughs> they were caring for. Yeah. So, you know, it's very, it's a tough thing to go uh, through. I did a lot of research when my dad had it, and sometime later when Mike's mother had it, and he kind of, he didn't educate himself as much when it was my dad, sure, but when sure. it became his mom. But there are wonderful resources. There are workshops to go to, and you learn so much. And he wrangled his siblings to go just to learn more because you can sure. handle it better How the more to. you know. Right, right, right. Yep, yep. Because some of the things when people think they're being helpful, and it was like, well, if you think about it, actually, that was not helpful right. at all, you know? And right. I was like, oh. You know, so, but you have to learn those things, and, yeah. and it's really a tough thing. So, anyway, all my kids, wonderful. They all seem to be very well-adjusted adults, okay. which I think is what we all You know, one for. thing I've got I to gotta ask. So, your mother was a long-time Mariner fan. Oh, gosh, yes. And it, what <laughs> reminds me of, it reminds me of that I would say, in longevity of Mariner fans, there's two people I think of, and, and I... You know, maybe there's more, <laughs> yeah. but it's your mother and Pansy Shorty. Oh, right. Which makes me think of a story. So the first time, Marine City was going to the state yeah, finals 07. at Fort Phil, okay, yeah. 07. So my mom was still alive, and she'd go into every game. Yes. Some of those playoff games, we'd like, I don't know, mom's pretty <laughs> cold out there, right. you know. I mean, just oh my gosh, I'm going. She didn't go to the one at um, Gaylord, I think, because yep, it okay. was. It was viciously yeah. cold, and we're like, she had congestive heart failure. Right, right. like, in her 90s. Oh, right. uh, in her 90s. Like, so, anyway, I think she was 91 when we went to, the, um, to Ford Field. And we got there, and, and um, my brother was there from South Hills, there someplace. So we call him on the phone, and it's like, you know, you hear, oh, yeah, yeah, we're down by the 30 yard line. Oh, we're at, you know, 45 on the other side, blah. And um, my sister, Jan, says, I think we've got the oldest Mariner fan here. <laughs> and Fred goes, I don't think so. Pansy Shorky he's sitting behind me. She right. had my mom by a few months, I think, <laughs> okay, or something, right, right. you know? And that, but we laughed. We said we should have gotten her a sweatshirt to wear that, you know, like Mariner fan class, yeah. of, class of 36. <laughs> right, exactly. Because <laughs> you know? I can remember seeing him in the stands in the cold weather. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a cool story. It, yeah, yeah, it was. It was that was that was a cool thing to be yeah. part of because you know it was the first time, so it was huge. Right. I think they estimated about eight thousand yeah. Marine City fans, which makes you laugh because was there four thousand people right. in Marine City? There were eight thousand yeah. people, but there was my brother and his family from yeah. out in Oakland County, and they were there. So yeah, it was so much fun. But she was there when we got there. We parked. I went online and found where the handicapped Closest parking spot way. was. So we parked there. We got out. We went to the door. Locked. Ugh. They didn't have it open. So we had down. to go all the way around the thing. She's like, I, uh, you know, what, we'll Sit pull down. out. Mom, we'll take you. And she's like, no, no, no. Nope, I can do it. You know, so she'd walk a little ways. Then we'd stop. Right. You know, and she'd take a little breather. And then we'd walk a little ways. Right. And, and they saw us coming. Well, Ford Field, I mean, yes, there was a lot of steps. But it was a breeze once she got in, right? I, well, you know what? <laughs> they saw us coming to the door, doors are on glass. And, and uh, I could see somebody coming with a wheelchair. Right. Really, because right. we had this little old lady, you know, yeah. that were, you know. They came and they cat her right from the door and then they wheeled her. Yeah. But she was not going to sit up there in that wheelchair. She was going, right. I'm going down, down, down to the seat. Yeah. I go, okay, but when we come back, we're going to wait until everybody's gone Everybody and off. you're going to take your time. So, yeah. which she did, but boy, she wouldn't, wasn't going to miss that. Yeah. Cool so. story. And yeah, we won. <laughs> yeah. Anything else I missed, do you think? I don't know. I think that, okay. you know, there was, there was a workshop that we had um, when we were starting. Dave Ivan. His name was came from MSU Extension and did this, and it was called "Can Small Towns Be Cool?" And it was something that we were like, <laughs> we're, not, "We're not very cool." <laughs> you know, right, like, right. And what he what he showed us were best practices of communities from all over the country that were so similar to ours that they just said, "What do we have? What do we right. What are we going to work with?" And let's go do this thing. And they did it, and that was enlightening to so many people. Sure. They're like, "Well, they did it," you well, know. The one thing that I've always thought of as well as whether whether you're at the River Crab or you're at St. Clair at the park or your mm -hmm. Marine City and you sunny beautiful summer afternoon 
and a thousand foot freighter goes by <laughs> and the locals are all sitting talking <laughs> yeah. and when you no biggie. and you can tell the locals from the visitors cuz the visitors are like or you know, they've got those phones. The phones they're taking, taking pictures. They're taking right. pictures right. And, I, and I can remember. It's, it's, cool. it's still cool, though. It is. Right? I love that. Yeah. And um, my son, Chris, and I administrate the City of Marine City Facebook page. There are 25,000 people on that page. I go, like, again, right. we only have 4,000 people that right. live in Marine City. But people are interested in it. We get people belong to it that they like visiting Marine City. The ones that I that are cool that relates to this are the ones that used to live here. Right. And they're like, you know, keep posting the yeah, pictures, you know, keep doing. And there was one, somebody posted a picture of recently of a, a ship in the fog or whatever. And, and oh. somebody posted, they said, can somebody post a video so I can hear oh. the freighter blow their horn? I miss that so much. So it's the kind of thing that when we're here all the time, yeah. we don't appreciate Or it. sometimes you complain because it's 6.30 in the morning. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. When I grew up, it's like, well, that didn't wake us up. Right. <laughs> it's like we were so used to it. My, my, my sister's. One husband, when they first moved, when they moved into Marine City, and she grew up there, and he didn't, I, he was getting woken up all yeah, the yeah. time, you know. And she was like, "What?" <laughs> so she was like, yeah. "Don't wake me up." She's like, "But he got used to it too, you know, so that you don't wake up." But I don't think I'll ever lose my appreciation right. for this location. Another thing is when you drive in Bell River Road and make a left-hand turn onto Broadway. If there's a freighter going by Broadway, <laughs> you'd swear it was on land. Yeah, well, and if you didn't know what it was, it was like, "What is that?" Yeah. You know, "What is that?" And uh, and then it, you realize it's moving, and right. then, you know, I think one of the most big disappointing things that my daddy had a uh, friend from Florida that came up to visit and took him to the river, and my dad's like, look at those ships, look at that, look at yeah. Canada, look at the river, and the guy went, all right. <laughs> my dad was like, <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Right. My dad was personally insulted, right. but he was not right. impressed by this, you know. Right. But So is it impressive to everybody? No, but most people. Oh, it is yes. impressive. So the other one is when you when you turn at City Hall and go up Main Street to the same north, thing. and if it's coming right at you, it you looks, go like it's coming down the right. street. It yes, like it, it. that does. You're right, and those are a couple things that I never, never get old. No, nah, yeah. they never cease to amaze me. I like the the Main Street one. You're right. When if it's coming, you just time it just right. It looks like it's coming right up the yeah. street at you. But it's, uh, you know, it's been. When I started working on this in 2006, I said, okay, five years, I'm going to see what, if we make any yeah. difference or whatever. After five years, it was so exciting. By that time, I was like, well, I can't stop now. So right. I. Uh, Still a hobby of yours. Something in excess yeah. of 10 years, you know, and I think about all the things we did. Oh, my gosh, I helped run. We started and ran an antique show on the river in Nautical Mile Park for three years, again, just to mm -hmm. support that industry that was always there. Um, we did business plan workshops that Glenn McBride did for us, and it was a two-week thing with a lot of homework oh, okay. in between, and at the end, they'd come out with a, a business plan they could take to a bank you know, to get a loan. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did some bed and breakfast workshops. So we did a lot of business support things because one of the things we saw too was this kind of churn. People are going to start a business, right, but right. they didn't have the knowledge, All they the didn't have the funding, they didn't, right. you know. And then so it's like, well, let's provide that. And um, we partnered up with the Chamber of Commerce and created a marketing committee uh, that we used to do this because it was like, right. I can't just do this like, oh, George is having a, <laughs> you know, give me your money. And uh, so we used the, the Chamber of Commerce, but it, and, and so that worked out well for them as well. You know, and again, that was an organization that that should be right. part of what they were doing. What they do. Yeah. So it, it was fun to do. Um, it's fun to live here, you know, in, in Marine City. I love to travel. I love to go see other places than that. But in a, my whole life I've done that. It was funny. Even way before any of this stuff, I was always taking notes in the back of my head about things that I'd seen, right, what people seen were doing. Yeah. places. Yeah. And uh, I've got a couple other little projects that I still would like to get to. Um, I do I do belong to the Marine City's Garden Club, which is a pretty loose organization, mm -hmm. but that was another thing. My dad told me that, well, he didn't tell me about the flower, the flowers. But he told me that they used to have, they used to have boat races in mm -hmm. Marine City like they have in yep. St. Clair now. And he'd said, he didn't say those damn people parking the flowers all the time. I was like, <laughs> where are they parking in the flowers? Well, you know, in Marine City, if you see that streetscape, the two blocks that go right. to the river, there's a median with flowers right. and stuff in it. They used to, they used to have that. That's not new. That's why it's an odd shaped right. street. It right. went all the way on Broadway, all the way to the Bell River Bridge. And people were trying to park to go park. to this front. They were just oh, pulling yeah. a flower bed. Okay. And my dad, wow. You know, it would make them crazy. And I thought like, wow. So when they talked about that streetscape, I was like, that's a great idea. That street was actually built right, for that. that. Way. 
and that. So Mike and I still take care of one block okay. of the streetscape. We have uh, volunteers that take care of. I just found two ladies that Which take care of. Which block are you handling? Block. We do the one. Um, uh, closest to the city hall okay. so across, like the old Methodist market, church market right there the market to Main Street yeah. and I just found two ladies that do um, from market to Water Street okay. and there's someone that does a Broadway Park there at the end where that nautical mile sign yeah. is and there's somebody that does Jude Jobin who kind of chairs our group she does uh, Heritage Square okay. Park which is old city hall and that so um, and okay. that's uh, yeah so then old city hall is another thing I'm just kind of getting back involved with the Historical Society of Marine City because they are focusing again yep. on that. And they're starting a maintenance fund, which was something that's always been at, with me is like there needs to be a maintenance fund because right. if the city's going to own it, old buildings are expensive to maintain yes. and things have to be taken care of. So n no plan's going to fly unless there's a plan to take care of this building. So uh, the Historical Society has a fund at the Community Foundation. It's at $64,000 right now and they are working to keep that going up and it's going to be dedicated towards maintenance for that okay. building as long as the city owns a building. So I'm like, oh, I can get behind that then. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that was one of my things well, on city Well, ha City Hall in and of itself and the whole issue of, of, of making it better and increasing its use mm -hmm. is probably something that you probably can work on for the next oh, 10 to 15 oh. years. I got involved <laughs> with it, yes, because it's, go it's going to take a lot. But there's now a, gr a group mm -hmm. that's a composite group from uh, different shareholders in the city, uh, they have the, in, including the city, which is the way that th it's the city's going to own it um, and use it. It's going to take more than just the city sure. to make that work. Yep. So this group, I'm I'm really hopeful that uh, they're successful in making that work. But I think when the historical society stepped forward with the maintenance fund plan, I think that was like, oh, I think a lot of people right. were waiting for that component of it that wasn't there yet. So I'm really um, uh, kind of excited about that because they've got the players they need, like the community, uh, the uh, uh, Pride and Heritage Museum, the Friends of City Hall. There's different groups that are all involved right. with that, and um, the Historic District um, okay. Commission and that. So I'm hopeful that was oh, yeah, something yeah. that I, my mom was really into I, that building. I think so. it's now primed to take the next step. I, so I it, it is. Like it. Yeah. it is, and um, they've just applied recently for a large grant. Uh, hopefully. That would be a game changer, okay. uh, just like the other grant that they got for the exterior. This one sure. would uh, it's looking a lot better it. than it did five oh, six years ago. Oh, it is, and it's functioning yeah. even more. And the River Rec Teen Zone was in that space, yeah. and that space was all that's already done up with their own bathrooms. They got the whole thing. That that's already in use. The rest of it's a little more challenging. That one's at grade level. Sure. <laughs> the yeah. rest of it, there's like seven oh, yeah, levels yeah. to that building. So um, before it can be utilized, we're talking uh, fire. Some fire suppression's already been done. Um, bathrooms have to be done. Uh, elevator has to go in. At sure. least, at least some ADA access to yep. at least the first Each. level. But um, like my old church, I used to go to the the main part was not on the floor, right. so you couldn't, you know. You know. Yeah, people couldn't get in and out very easily. So, uh, you know, th those things have to be done. But that's all on the yeah. list, and steps have been have taken place towards all of that. So, um, it's just such an asset oh, yeah. for the community because. Not every community has a vocal point like right, that. Right, the center of the city like that. Yes, yeah. yes. And, um, that, you know, that's what it is. I mean, you tell people, it's like, you got to go to the light city at Hall. Old City Hall. Right, right. You know, if you turn left, it's two blocks. Yeah, There's yeah, a river. Yeah. You can see it from there, whatever. When we started, again, back with the things we were trying to do, people wanted to see a farmer's market. So I was like, oh, I have right. some background with a little bit of farming for my dad. So um, I got that started, which, and that was at that location. You know, now it's, uh, the Lions Club does it now right, over right. on there's, uh, their, their site. But, you know, it's just a, a marvelous place. People still, now that they have the new... Gazebo? Uh, yeah, the new yep. gazebo in there, bandstand, yep, technically. Yep. Okay. Um, people can start doing weddings there again because yeah. people would love to do that. And then once the interior is open, right, really right, cool right, right. venue, really yeah, yeah, cool yeah. venue. Okay. So I'm hoping I live long enough for that one. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> well, thank you for coming by. Yeah, well, I tell you, this was fun. I haven't had a chance to talk about this stuff for a while. Okay. And um, we'll it's... We'll have you back again. Okay. And it's important to, to talk about these things and, and to keep focusing on moving forward. Yes. You know. In a positive direction. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You got to work on that Mike guy that you live with. You that Mike guy? You would get yeah, him over here? You got to get him over yeah, here. Yeah, tell him about the, those family-owned businesses. And right. Yeah, and, and uh, design and build and all that kind of stuff. He'd, 
He, you know, he did a wonderful job with that business. He truly did. I mean, the business probably uh, sixty some years old now. In that, in, but he doesn't talk he about doesn't, it. Right, right. Yeah, we'll we'll get him. It. We'll get him. He goes, I'll work, but I talk right, about we'll it. Get so him. yeah, well, great. So thank you for coming by, uh, Georgia Geyer Phelan. Yeah. Uh, number fifty-eight on my list here. I've got the number. <laughs> Georgia, look at that phone number there, and if if you know anybody, have them call that number. Okay. And suggest anybody else to give us uh, an interview on In the Zone. I Until will next do that. time, we'll see you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah.